It's considered by many as the greatest animated film to come out of the Disney Renaissance era. It also just so happens to have an upcoming live action adaptation coming to theaters. No, 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 just fast forward to the part. Yeah, that's the good stuff. But all the Lion King talk lately has got us thinking about the original animated movie, specifically some of the theories that fans have come up with. But not just any theories. Today we're going to take a look at some of the darker ones. Darker ones that might actually change the way you look at the film. I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and these are five dark theories about Disney's The Lion King. Now, let's get started. Theory number one, Simba only didn't eat Pumbaa because he didn't know that he could. Okay, let's kick this off with a simple one. Based on what we see throughout the movie, warthogs seem to be pretty rare in the Pride Lands. We just don't really see many. Since Simba is young and only just starting off learning how to hunt, it makes sense that he may not have seen a warthog himself yet. Or his father never clarified whether or not warthogs are edible animals. Why would he need clarification? Because it's established. It's determined that Mufasa has to teach his son what animals are acceptable to eat. Which I guess is pretty dark in and of itself considering Mufasa gets to make the determination of which of his subjects are okay to have for dinner. But the point is, which ones are edible is something that he has to actually teach to Simba. We actually watch him do this specifically regarding the antelope. Dad, don't we eat the antelope? Yes, Simba, but let me explain. Simba knows that he's a carnivore when he meets Timon and Pumbaa, but never even connects that this would make them feel uncomfortable as he openly talks about eating other living mammals. I'm so hungry I could eat a whole zebra. Ah, we're fresh out of zebra. Any antelope? In his mind, they aren't even food because his dad never told him that they were. So had things happened differently in really any other way, Simba would have just eaten Timon and Pumbaa. Because, well, it's the circle of life. Theory number two, Zazu is a traitor. This is a juicy theory that comes from Reddit user Combustible Compost. He suggests that the character Zazu, the hornbill and trustworthy advisor of King Mufasa, is actually a traitor who's working for Scar. It's quite the accusation, so let's go ahead and break down the evidence that's weighed against him. As far as motivation goes, it doesn't take a whole lot to realize that Zazu is treated really poorly by both Mufasa and his son Simba, not to mention the rest of the kingdom. During the I Can't Wait to Be King song, Zazu is stepped on, trampled, and sat on, essentially being disrespected by every animal in the kingdom. All this despite the fact that Zazu has a high status that should probably be respected. And yes, the rest of the kingdom does know about his high status because it's referenced by other characters in the film. From Zazu's perspective, Mufasa routinely treats him poorly and is currently raising his spoiled, entitled son to do the exact same thing. Mufasa even uses Zazu as a prop during Simba's pouncing lesson. Pouncing? Oh no, sire, you can't be serious. Zazu even states his problem with Simba a couple times as well, stating, If this is where the monarchy is headed, count me out! Simba even alludes to getting rid of Zazu as an advisor once he becomes the king. Not so long as I'm around. Well, in that case, you're fired. So according to this theory, Zazu's betrayal kind of makes sense. Whether it's out of self-interest or because he thinks it's better not to have a spoiled brat in charge of the Pride Lands. Now, the first time that Zazu and Scar interact, it's when Simba is still a newborn. At this point, Zazu is still loyal to Mufasa and acting in his best interest. But once Simba grows up a bit, Zazu becomes annoyed and remembers that Scar is a more suitable heir to the throne. When Simba and Nala are lured to the hyenas, Simba references having Zazu fired one day and his behavior only reinforces what Zazu feels needs to be done, that Simba needs to be dealt with, which he's already assisted Scar putting into motion. Obviously, Obviously the plan fails, but Zazu being a traitor stays a secret. And although they toy with him, throwing him in a big cauldron, Zazu could have been let go by the hyenas because they know that he's on Scar's side. But a very important detail is this, that Zazu only wanted Simba dealt with, out of fear that he would be a terrible ruler. I'm afraid you're shaping up to be a pretty pathetic king indeed. Murdering Mufasa was never part of his plan. Scar kept this secret from him. The real evidence for this comes when Scar warns Mufasa that Simba is caught in the stampede. Zazu realizes the true intent of Scar's plan, to kill not only Simba, but Mufasa as well. He panics and goes for help, but Scar knocks him out. Ha! I'll go back for help! That's what I'll do! I'll go back for help! Oomph. 
Now, here's the point. If Zazu were innocent of treachery, why would he not inform anyone later that Scar knocked him out? Why would he not find the fact that Scar knocked him out suspicious? Why would he not say anything? Later on, the reason why he doesn't tell anyone that Scar stopped him from getting help was because he knows that he's complicit. Scar has dirt on him, which is eventually why he gets put in a cage. But there's more to this theory. Check this out. It's pretty common knowledge that The Lion King is based on Hamlet. Believe me, I read the play. And by read it, I mean I skimmed my friend's notes before a test in college for 12 minutes, but I did pass. C minus. Anyway, The Lion King and Hamlet both have the prince, death of their fathers, murderous uncles, father appears, exile, revenge, etc. Simba is Hamlet, Scar is Claudius, Mufasa is King Hamlet, Nala is Ophelia, but what character from the Hamlet play does Zazu mirror? Well, Polonius, the king's chief counselor. In Hamlet, Polonius conspires with Claudius, that's Scar, to spy on Hamlet, since he's concerned about the monarchy. If Zazu is meant to mirror Polonius, like all the other characters mirror their respective Hamlet characters, then I think we might have a guilty bird. The prosecution rests. What do you think? Is Zazu guilty? Let us know in the comments section below. Theory number three, Scar practiced cannibalism. During the scene in which Scar lounges and forces Zazu to sing songs, going back to what we just mentioned in the last theory, this is again a reference to Hamlet. You could read the play yourself, or if you're cultured like me, just watch the Billy Madison clip. To die, to sleep, no more. Anyway, many have pointed out that this skull might actually be a lion skull which suggests that Scar ate a lion. Now this isn't too far-fetched considering the fact that a big plot point is that there's a famine brought on by Scar's poor leadership. But still, cannibalism, that's pretty dark for a Disney movie. Of course, this could very well be a skull to a different species, or even if it is a lion, it doesn't necessarily mean that Scar actually ate it. Maybe it's Mufasa's skull that Scar kept as a trophy. Okay, that's actually even darker. Theory number four, Simba and Nala are related. All right, I hate to go here, but it has to be done. It's a video on dark theories after all. Reddit user Sarah Von Trapp suggests that Simba and Nala are either half siblings or cousins because Nala's father either must be Mufasa or Scar. Why is this? Well, in the wild, lions arrange themselves into prides made up of a coalition of two male lions and numerous female lions. And it looks like that's the case in The Lion King, because aside from Simba, that's exactly what's represented in the pride. Obviously, Mufasa and Scar have formed a coalition, and the pride consists of them, Simba, and all the females. Which is why you never see any other male lions. Which means that any cubs here are the offspring of either Scar or Mufasa, making Simba and Nala either half-siblings or cousins. But again, it's a cartoon, I get it, we can't assume everything in the film is realistic to nature. For example, lions don't talk. You're so weird. You have no idea. But, you know, hypothetically, if we did base all our theories off nature, Scar also likely would have impregnated the lionesses while he was the ruler, and after the credits rolled, Simba likely murdered any of Scar's offspring. Because that's what happens when a lion takes over a pride in real life. But I get it. It's a cartoon. Theory number five. Mufasa was the bad guy. Controversial, I know, but this theory has been floating around for a while. Mufasa may seem like the rightful king. I mean, his name literally translates to king in Swahili. But really look at Mufasa's kingdom. The cats at the top of the monarchy get to eat all those beneath them. Now, I'm no vegetarian, I love a good steak, but there's something a bit cruel about convincing everyone in your kingdom that you get to eat them. And not only just eat them, but eat them and have them love you for it. It sounds like the whole circle of life thing is just a catchy little propaganda tune used to convince animals that by allowing themselves to be your dinner, they're serving some higher power. Because you know, dead bodies are just like tomorrow's grass, man. You can eat that too. We are all connected in the great circle of life. Let's not forget that the hyenas have been segregated from the Pride Lands. And Scar is the only one fighting for their equality. What if The Lion King is just a story retroactively told by the victors? What if painting Scar out to be a monster is just some form of propaganda story? I mean, the hyenas are even showcased as goose-stepping fascists. Let's be real, talk about some dirty political tricks there, Simba. How many times have you seen that happen? For all we know, the problems with the Pride Lands, the famine, the drought had nothing to do with Scar's decisions. I mean, what if it was just weather? How is a lion going to control that? All we know is Simba idolized his dad, and the Pride Lands is a clear monarchy. 
So after he killed Scar, the story was to be told his way, because he's the king now. And bonus theory, Timon is a cult leader. When Simba first stumbles upon Timon and Pumbaa, Timon, who's clearly the smarter of the two, tells him that Simba will grow up to be big and ferocious. And if they have a lion on their side, things will be way easier for them. What if he's on our side? You know, having a lion around might not be such a bad idea. When he realizes that Simba is hurt and vulnerable, he introduces him to his philosophy, Hakuna Matata. And for all we know, before Simba, Timon pulled the same trick with Pumbaa. After all, Timon is smart, charismatic, and despite his small size, a leader in his own unique way. His goal seems to be recruiting bigger animals by targeting them when they're young and impressionable by promising them an awesome carefree lifestyle. Sneaky little guy. So those are our favorite dark theories about the Lion King. Do you think any of them are true, or do you think they're just kind of fun to think about? And do you have any dark theories about the movie that we missed? Let us know in the comments section below. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. But most importantly, stay wicked.